Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Irene's DIY Addiction and today we're gonna do something really awesome. A true looking antique French boudoir but in miniature. As you may know, I have another channel about restoring antique dolls and in the very first videos I made a short frame in the very end of the video showing a doll moving, but some people found it creepy and so I thought it would be a good idea to make a short clip with dolls moving with stop motion video and just imagine how cool it would be a doll having tea or dressing or primping at a dressing table. But to do this, I needed to make an interior for the doll. I'll start with making the walls. I want the whole setting uh, to make it so, so that I could install it quickly and remove it very quickly as well after filming. So I'm going to be using a huge box for the base. I received a very nice bag in this box many years ago. <laughs> I wanted to cover the walls with antique looking wallpaper and this was a real challenge. I tried to find decorative paper that would look antique, searched through the web for any printable images and even visited several shops looking for real wallpaper with small scaled prints with no success. I even started thinking about painting the walls and drawing the prints myself, but then a new idea came to me fabric. I could use fabric. Fabrics often have small scale prints which I needed and in my favorite fabric shop I found the whole collection of William Morris prints. This is the famous 19th century designer so his prints will work the best for my purpose. So I bought the whole bunch of different fabrics and for the walls I've chosen the famous strawberry thief print. Just look at those cute little birds. I think it will work perfect for any doll's room. And also I bought the whole bunch of different prints which go well together with the main one to be able to make some little pillows and cushions and upholstering miniature furniture and so on. I wanted the base to be kind of multi-purpose so that I could change the setting a little for each video. And to be able to do this, I've decided to make a magnetic base. I thought I could place a sheet of steel under the wallpaper so that I could install those little accessories easily and remove them. But the problem was where could I get a sheet of steel of that size? The answer is a kid magnetic board. I bought the cheapest one and after disassembling the frame, here we go. I've used mounting glue to attach the steel sheet to the box cover on the inside and also I've added little magnets on the bottom to be able to insert the faux wall with a window here later. And after that I've covered the whole box with the fabric on the inside. I've used white glue as it leaves no marks on fabric after it's dry. And I've had to use an extra piece of fabric for the bottom as the width was not enough. Now the base is finished and once you open up the box like this, you have like uh, the corner of a room and you can put any setting and any piece of furniture here. And on this wall where there is the steel sheet under the fabric, you can attach any wall embellishment you like, like a picture frame or a decorative plate or even an LED light if it has some <laughs> magnet on it. And the only thing you need is to attach a tiny magnet on the back so you'll be able to hang it like this. To make it look like a 19th century room I'm going to use a lot of wall paintings and I have here very nice molds uh, which uh, are like gilded antique frames and uh, I'm going to be using antique postcards to fill those molds. I think they will look amazing. 
Since the molds I'll use are very intricate with lots of tiny details, I've decided not to use self-hardening clay here. I'll make the casts out of liquid plastic compound. Uh, it is on a costly side, but uh, the casts are very durable. And the best thing for me is that they are really long wearing and that this liquid plastic repeats the tiniest details of the mold, so I'll end up with the really high quality costs. This plastic compound works like epoxy resin in a way. You want to mix two equal parts of each component and pour it into a mold and wait till it sets. And like when working with epoxy resin, be sure to use separate containers and separate stirrers when weighing the components. Because once the two components are together, they start to react and boom! No, just joking. It will not explode, of course, but the mix will start hardening too quickly and you won't have time to pour it into the mold. After pouring the mix into the mold, you want to leave it for 5 minutes, depending on the brand of the plastic you use. This time can be longer or shorter. <clears throat> and when it becomes creamy and not so sticky to the touch, you can release the casts. They are still soft like jelly, and if you place them on to a curvy or rounded surface, the cast will take its shape, but I don't want that here. All in all, this plastic is fun and easy to work with. Do try it if you haven't already. I've left the cast seat for a couple of hours and now they're really hard, like they're made of hard plastic or rather out of bone. And now I need to paint them. I've spray painted the frames and applied dark wax to distress them a bit. I'll use antique postcards for filling the frames. I've also made simpler wooden frames out of popsicle sticks and bamboo skewers. I've cut them to size, glued together and stained the frames. Finally, I've attached the frames to the images. and added little magnets on the back. Now let's do the furniture. First of all, I need a dressing table. I've searched through the web and here is my inspo table. I just love its intricate sides and tiny drawers and all those embellishments. And I think it will not be so hard to recreate despite its tricky shape. First of all, I needed a mirror. I needed an antique mirror and I searched through the all uh, kind of websites where we have uh, all things on sales. I've bought a couple of oval mirrors first, but they ended up being too small for my purpose. And as you could see on the reference picture, this table had a psyche mirror, the mirror which could rotate. And this was not easy to recreate. And then I came across this one. It is just perfect for my purpose. It is a psyche mirror, it can rotate as you can see, and it is small like a doll scaled mirror, so it is just perfect size uh, I needed and the best it was super cheap because there were some imperfections like the mirror has some signs of wear, signs of time and also some um, details here and here are missing but for me it's fine because I need an antique looking table so I think those imperfections they just add to the overall look. For making the table I'll use this leftover piece of birch plywood because it has nice edge unlike normal pine plywood which uh, has many layers and an extra piece of birch because uh, there's not enough material and I'm kind of nervous if uh, I'll do everything properly because my pattern has many curves and many tricky places <laughs> and if I make something wrong I'll have to buy more material. I've outlined the templates on the plywood and cut the parts.
cotton took quite a lot of time as I didn't want the mirror to look out of place with the table and so I added many little details repeating the mirror pattern in a way and I had a hard time cutting all this out. The bottom part was much, much easier to cut. After that I sanded all the parts a little bit and they were ready for further work. I want the tabletop to have a nice wood pattern, so I'm going to be using wooden veneers to cover this tabletop and I want uh, four pieces of wooden veneer to meet in the middle with wood grain going diagonally like this. This is very typical for antique tables and looks really nice. The veneers are really thin and can be cut easily with a box knife or even scissors. I'm cutting all the parts with a little extra to be sure there will be no gaps in between. Actually placing the pieces like I mentioned with diagonal parting means to use a lot of veneers as you can place only one piece on a A4 veneer sheet. But I've saved all the cuts to use them in other projects so that's fine for me. Before attaching the veneers I'm smearing both the base and the veneer parts with wood glue and let them sit for half an hour till they are dry. And after that I'm simply ironing the veneers on. This is a really fun technique and like using glue in normal way this lets you be very precise with where you want to attach the veneer. The problem is here on the reference picture you can see that the edge of the tabletop is not just rounded but is curvy, so a router is needed here. We've bought a MDR bit to make the similar edge. This one had the smallest curve I could find. It is intended for 9mm wood but I still hope it will work. Let's try it out. Gary is the one who will do this work since I don't want to spoil the parts looks great. Okay, now let's work with the parts. The parts are finished and I think they look just amazing, like a real tabletop but in miniature. I'll try on the mirror and I think it looks Great. I still need to make that part in between the two tabletops. It is curvy and kind of tricky to make out of uh, plywood or wood, so I'm going to try to use cardboard and soak it with glue, like making a papier mache uh, part. And if it works, I'll cover this with vin wooden veneers too. I also have a little problem with this bottom part. Uh, probably because I had cut it while it was quite uh, wet weather and uh, therefore this part has curved a little bit. You can see it is not completely flat now, so I'll have to do something with it. I'm going to try to wet it a little bit and put under weight, but if it doesn't work I'll have to make a new part. After some thought I've decided to make the curvy part using toilet paper rolls as it's much easier than trying to bend a flat cardboard strip. I've cut the pieces I'll need from the rolls and also I've cut several rectangular strips for the flat parts. I've also cut the opening in the front piece to be able to add a drawer here later. And finally I've attached all those pieces to the bottom part of the tabletop using paper strips. This inner part is therefore all made of small pieces, but this helped me make this fancy curvy shape I needed without any problem. 
I've reinforced the side part with several layers of paper soaked with glue, so after finished it's really sturdy, although this is not wood. Well, now this curvy part is completed, the base of it, of course, and uh, it may not look really attractive right now because of all this paper, but it will not be visible once covered with the upper part like this. So that's fine. And the next I'm going to cover all the outside with wooden veneers. And also, as you can see here, I have a little part made out of cardboard. I made it for the drawer to slide smoothly. And those little sides will lock the drawer inside, but I haven't glued them on yet because I think uh, covering this part with wooden veneer will be much much easier once it is flat without the sides. So I'm going to cover this part and those parts with the wooden veneer separately and only after that I'll glue everything together. So, as I have already shown, I've smeared both the cardboard parts and wooden veneers with glue. And after that I've attached the veneers. Here I tried to do without ironing as the surfaces are not flat. As for the bottom part that had warped a bit, I've wet it and then I've placed it in between two parts of lumber, secured with clamps and looks like it worked. So the main part of the table is finished, but before I assemble it completely, I want to make the holes for assembling it with the legs. For making the legs, I'll be using those baluster spindles, the vintage one, and I like the shape. And I'm going to make uh, the holes here to put it like this. And I think I'll shorten uh, the legs to make all the table look kind of well balanced. I'm drilling the bottom part to insert the spindles here. And as I've told you, I shortened the spindles, so I'll have to add new wooden dowel pins here. I'm drilling the bottom part of the tabletop and then the spindles, inserting the wooden dowel pins there, and then I'm gluing everything together. After drying, I've secured the tabletop part to the bottom part with clamps and covered the insides with paper strips. They are stone hard once dry if you make enough layers. As you could see, I made only two legs so far. For the other two legs, I'll use a couple of wooden slats. Here the shape is very basic, just as on the inspo image. So the table is completed and I really love how it turned out. It looks really good. I still need to attach the mirror here on the top of the table and I'll also have to make the drawer. And after that I'm going to stain the whole table to adjust it to the color of the mirror because I want them to look like the whole single unit. I've made the drawer out of cardboard and wooden veneers just as the table side part. I'm covering the inner sides first, then assembling the drawer with paper strips and finally covering the outsides with veneers to hide the paper. Then I've attached the mirror and clamped it to the table till dry. And finally I've stained the table. I've used Varathan Provincial Stain and I think the shade matches the mirror pretty well. 
I've also applied the patina, I used it for the legs as I only wanted them to be a little darker and also I've applied it in places making darker sports here and there. At the very end I've sealed the table with shellac varnish to make the whole table shiny just as an antique piece of furniture would be. So the table is finished. I still need to make the handle for the drawer and maybe I'll repair those issues on the mirror. I'm still not sure if I want to do this and I can't tell you how happy I am with the result. It looks so real and now I need to make all those little items to fill the table. First, as this is a 19th century table, I've decided I needed a fan. I've bought a broken mother of pearl caviar spoon. It is flat and so tiny and has such a nice handle. So I've cut an ostrich feather into pieces and attached them to the back of the spoon. And here it is. It is kind of uh, big for this tiny table, but I think it could work for a bigger doll, so I'll use it here. Next, I've decided to make a powder puff. I've made a base out of silk ribbon, like a tiny rounded cushion. I've used some ostrich down from feathers lower part and I've sewn the down onto the silk cushion. In the end I've attached a tiny handle out of a jewelry bead holder and here we go. I think it is so cute. I also had this tiny box. I think it used to be a snuff box or a box for storing beauty spots and I think it will work as a powder box for a doll as well. I've came across nice little mother of pearl beads that looked like tiny handles and before I've decided to make a manicure set or a vanity set. I've attached jewelry pins to hide the holes on the beads, cut the working parts out of thin metal and wire and assembled the tools. They are not perfect, of course, and you can see they are not real, but I hope someday I'll be able to buy a real manicure set or vanity set for a doll. They are super rare and super expensive now, so I'm not sure I'll be able to do this, and till then I'll use those tiny tools. I've also bought those perfume samples for filling the table. They are a little bit out of date for the time I'm referring to, since they are from 50s and not uh, the end of 19th century, but they are so cute. I used to collect those uh, vintage perfumes years ago and I had all those uh, perfume bottles in real size and these are the same but in miniature. They are so adorable. Here I have uh, Chanel number no. 5 and Guerlain, Chalimar and Laure Bleau and some others. Actually the most famous perfumes of this epoch. And I think since those samples are vintage they will work perfect in an antique setting. I also have a doll scale set, a brush and a hand mirror and I think uh, they will work perfect for adding to the table and maybe I'll be able to use them when filming the doll. And for filling the bottom part of the table I'll use some tiny boxes. I have those very nice looking antique boxes. I'm not sure what they used to be but I love how they look. And I think I'll also add this tiny doll bag. Those miniature items, they are so cute and I think it will add to the overall look. 
well maybe I'll add something else when I finish the setting maybe a nice uh, lace napkin or something so now all I have to do is to put everything together I've added a small carpet on the floor. Then goes the table and the chair, which I've shown in my recent haul. The pictures, here I've played a little, arranging them till I liked the look. I've added a little lace napkin and a couple of smaller pictures. The perfumes and the vanity accessories. A tiny candle holder with a cake candle, the boxes, the bag, and the doll, of course. But the opposite wall looked too empty, so I've added an antique smoking cabinet. It works as a perfect doll dresser. And the boudoir is finally completed. You may have already seen the setting in my recent doll restoration video. Here, sweet Amelia is working for a model, and I'm so happy with the result. It looks like a real 19th century room, and I think the whole setting works just right with an antique doll. Being so warm and cozy, and having that romantic, nostalgic, and a little mysterious mood I wanted for my videos. Well, I hope you liked this video. Please let me know if you want more videos like this about preparing the setting for a vintage uh, restoration video. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!